Hi everyone, my name is Devin Butterbrook. I'm the new product manager here at Classic Instruments and today we're going to be doing a flowless fuel center install in a Tanks Incorporated fuel tank. The things that we're going to need for this are the flowless center. I have a 12 volt power source here that's going to simulate your ignition or keyed on switch. We have our fuel gauge and our fuel tank. Our fuel tank, now I filled it with water just for demonstration purposes. It's going to be filled with gas in your car and just always remember to take care and caution when working around an open and exposed fuel source. The first step is going to be to measure our tank depth. I already did that and this tank is 11 and a quarter inches from the top of the flange to the bottom of the tank. So therefore, you minus one half inch from, the, from that distance and cut your sender off from the bottom of the flange to the end of the tube. So I cut this one off at 10 and 3 quarters inches. I'm going to install the center into the tank. It does have some buoyancy so it's going to want to float up here for a little bit. And I've made my 12 volt connections to my gauge at the proper power and ground connections and also my center wire. Moving on, I'm going to take my connections from my gauge and connect them to my center. We're going to connect our black wire to ground our pink wire is going to connect to our center wire and our purple wire is going to connect to a 12 volt ignition source. Now you'll see if you look at the gauge we're reading way past empty. Now that's good because come from the factory this 240 to 33 ohm floatless fuel center is it's programmed for the empty position and the gauge should read that. With, the, with that reading we're going to fill the tank all the way up to full, and as I said, my tank here is filled with water. I'm going to take the white wire from the sending unit and touch it to the power wire for 10 seconds. Now, like I said before, always use caution when making connections around an open fuel source. I'm just going to take it and hold it for 10 seconds. Now, when you do this, make sure that you get a really solid connection. Don't make multiple touches onto the power wire because that's going to throw off our calibration sequence. So make sure you have a good solid contact for 10 seconds. After that's done, remove the white wire and connect it to ground. And our fuel gauge should be up at full as it's showing. Now, with every fuel, floatless fuel sender install, I would strongly recommend that you verify your sender operation before reinstalling your tank. Um, that's a, just to save you a little hassle, especially if your tank is difficult to get to, difficult to drop or empty, or the sender, sender's in a difficult position. So the easiest way to do that is just to take the sender, watching the gauge, and pull the sender up. And as you see, your gauge should start sweeping. So we'll have, there's a half tank, and if you pull it all the way out, we should go down to empty, which it does. Moving back in, you'll see it comes all the way up to full as we push it in the tank. So congratulations. As long as you follow these steps, you'll finish your first floatless fuel center installation. So you're still having trouble calibrating your flowless fuel sender after watching the first part of our installation video. This part of the video is going to show you how to recalibrate it should you have any trouble or difficulty calibrating the sender. The thing we have to remember is there's three different stages to the calibration cycle of this flowless fuel sender. Coming to you, the flowless fuel sender already has the empty position set and all you need to calibrate is a full position of the tank which you'll do as, you, as we did in the first part of this video. If you do have trouble, what we're going to have to do is remove our white wire from ground and determine what step of the sequence it is, it's in. There's, the three steps are calibrating the full position, there's a reset position, and an empty position. Now I'm going to show you this on a 240 to 33 ohm fuel sender. It's going to be a little, slightly different on the other ohm ranges, 0 to 90 and 10 to 180. As you can see, our gauge is reading way past empty. We don't know what state of the sequence it's in. In order to fix that, we're going to remove our sender from our tank and just lay it on the top or away from anything else. Take your white wire 
and touch it to power. Be sure you make the good solid contact for 10 seconds. And we'll watch our gauge. And after we remove the white wire after 10 seconds, we can see it still did nothing. That tells us that we just switched modes again. If we touch it again, we should watch. And once we remove it, the gauge goes up to full. So that's telling us that that just reset the full position with no, with no pressure in the tank. So now we're going to take the white wire again, touch it to power for 10 seconds, and once we remove it, the pointer should drop all the way, way past empty, which it does. That's telling us that we're in the reset mode. Touching it again for 10 seconds is going to calibrate the empty position of the center. Now you're going to want to calibrate the empty position of the sender with it out of the tank. So it's just, just static. Nothing else is affecting it. Once you remove the white wire, it should do nothing. And we're going to reinstall the fuel sender into the tank. With the fuel sender reinstalled into the tank, with the tank filled up to full, we're going to again touch the calibration wire to 12 volts for 10 seconds. Now after 10 seconds, remove your wire and it should go back up to full. Verify that your fuel gauge is working by picking up the center, and dropping it back in and making sure that it's sweeping. And if it does, that means that our calibration is complete. Reconnect the white wire to ground and we're complete.